Guess who's back? Back again. It's time to head back to Amphibia for the second half of Season 2. Starting up this Saturday. And man, are things heating up fast. Between the journey to the three temples to recharge the Calamity Box gems, to the invasion of Newtopia, seeing the return of General Yunnan, I don't even know how crazy everything will be by the end of the season. This appears to be one of the most action-packed back halves of a season for a story-driven Disney cartoon yet. And as always, we're here to break down the trailer frame by frame for all the details you may have missed. And if you're down for more Amphibia content or just content on cartoons old and new, please remember to subscribe and hit that like button. And of course, brief spoilers in case you don't want anything ruined for the imagination. If you just plan to go into these episodes blind, click off now. With all that said, let's dive in. We open with scenes lifted from Adan at the Aquarium, Marcy at the Gates, The Sleepover to End All Sleepovers, and Toadcatcher, which establishes not only the overarching story for the remainder of the season, but the character conflicts as well. After learning the Calamity Box's purpose of traveling to different worlds, Anne and Marcy now know that the key back home lies in the trek to three different temples all of which appear in this trailer, in order to recharge the three gems and return home. However, Sasha is a big piece of the puzzle as they can't return home without her. Not just for the sake of their friendship, but for a bigger, cosmic reason that these characters are still unaware of. Her role within the purple-pink gem and the Great Prophecy. Anne and Marcy want to find her and make things right, but Sasha is already committing to a different path in wanting to siege Newtopia with Grime. Another clash between these estranged friends is inevitable. In the first drop of new footage, we see a gigantic, armored bird descend into Wartwood. Take note of their green feather tip and the mountain of books piled up on their back. This bird is absolutely Marcy's method of transportation from Utopia. Reminds me of the Great Eagles from Lord of the Rings. I could see this easily being Marcy's arrival in the first temple, or a scene from the episode New Wartwood, which is about Marcy devising a plan to win over Wartwood by improving the town. Considering when the bird flies in, there is no sign of Marcy on their back, I'm partial to this actually being from New Wartwood. Marcy having this bird gather her books from Utopia for research and information on what amphibians like in order for her to properly spruce up Wartwood. Now, personally, I'm going to feel a little uneasy seeing any non-amphibian animal that's being used for labor and sent from Utopia. Because thanks to the events of the sleepovers and all sleepovers, we have the startling revelation that a lot of species in Amphibia were likely abducted against their will. So while seeing this bird should be cool, and kinda is, there's just an underlying gross feeling that makes me want to throw hands at Andreas. Moving on, however, this bird is seen flying Anne, Marcy, and the planters to presumably the first temple. We can see Anne on one end of the bench, Marcy on the other, Sprig next to Anne, a peak of Polly's hair bow in between Sprig and Marcy, and Hop Hop having to ride in an arguably less secure spot, both of his arms gripped by the feet of the bird. He may as well be flying spirit. We get a good look at the first temple itself, and the Zelda vibes are at an all-time time high. The scenery is gorgeous, but what immediately grabbed my attention is the motif to the gem that the temple is centered around. If you recall in our breakdown for the mid-season finale, fans were able to decode the pages in Andreas's book, allowing us to read the signature trait of each gem, the green gem being wit, blue being heart, and purple pink being strength. Wit being the name of the game for this first temple, sees green, brain-shaped plant life permeated throughout. And I really wonder exactly what these things are. They can't be just for show. Are they tied directly to the power of the gem? Could Marcy take a sample of the substance and use it for her alchemy and potions? Would consuming one of these allow you to suddenly use 100% of your brain power? As always, the sky is the limit, and I really hope we get some sort of an explanation. There's engravings that impick amphibians reading, most likely newts, symbolic of their possession of knowledge, and the temple itself has statues of brains, axolotls, which we know to be more intelligent inhabitants of amphibia, and non-specific amphibians actually holding brains. And as we work our way up to the top, you may recognize a familiar frog head, one that's identical to the frog head we see at the end of the theme song, and similar to the frog head that's parallel to Anne in every title card. It just goes to show that the presence of these temples were foreshadowed since the very beginning. This was always a part of the plan. And at the very top of the temple is a depiction of a Chaos Emerald, I mean, Calamity Gem. So this is arguably very much in plain sight, which we can't really say for the other temples. Speaking of which, this next snippet is very telling. 
Once recharged, the gems of the Calamity Box can be used as a compass of sorts to find the other temples. Remember, Andrea said there is only one known location which is Marcy's temple. And here, the gang finds the second temple in a much colder climate. Everyone all bundled up as Marcy is holding the recharged green gem, which is emitting a beam of light directly at the eye of a shrine, clearing the foggy pathway ahead of them. Whereas the first temple was super earthy, this one seems to be themed around the element of ice. We don't see much of this temple, but with blue gem being centered around the theme of heart, I can only imagine that this is a play on the term cold hearted, and Anne will have to recharge the gem by completing trials that show the heat of her compassion. But of course, things won't really heat up until the third temple, which certainly echoes strength just through the gates itself. Which, need I remind y'all, is within a volcano, spotted in the Season 2 credits. The temple is being visually held up by two ruby red depictions of buff toads, with two, smaller, salamander statues flexing in the direction of a giant anvil, below the head of a scarred toad. Yeah, everything about this screams Sasha's temple. And just by observing the first and third's temple's use of newts and toads respectively, it feels less and less like a coincidence that Marcy and Sasha ended up where they did. Instead, it feels like a confident stroke of destiny, bringing these three stars together to expel the night. Sprig and Ivy are seeing Naruto jumping through trees, Ivy carrying a bundle and appears to be going off on an optimistic monologue, while Sprig looks at her with passive irritation. This is without a doubt from the episode Ivy on the Run. With the synopsis, fed up with her mother's strict rules, Ivy concocts a plan to run away, a plan that Sprig clearly doesn't see eye to eye with, but is roped into anyways. It'll be interesting to see if Sprig stands his ground and explains to Ivy why this isn't right, because while Ivy can push Sprig into new, adventurous things Things he'd hesitate on otherwise. It's important for Sprig to provide insight into things about Ivy's own behavior that can help her grow as well, to have them learn from each other. Sprig and Polly is seen driving Bessie and the Fwagon home at night. This is from the episode Night Drivers, which aired early on Disney Channel Africa, so I really can't speculate when I know what happens in the episode. Next up, we have more of that Zelda influence shining through, as Marcy is in the midst of solving a puzzle, one that encases her in a green bubble suspended in midair. I assume this is thanks to the gold cube in her possession, the turning of the cube correlating to the turning of the tiles. Going off the mirror on the wall, and typical video game puzzles, Marcy has to shift the tiles into a particular pattern or direction until it aligns with the mural itself, granting the group an unlocked path as a result. We have Maddie throwing a pouch and the giant monster, Chickalisk, attacking Wartwood, both from the episode Return to Wartwood. Getting into even more exciting aspects of this trailer, we have Sasha and Grime holding a giant ball with glowing pink runes that I don't believe is a part of the amphibian alphabet. I assume this is a trial relating to one of the temples and calamity gems. So my best guess is that this is from either Total Redemption, the next likely Sasha and Grime appearance, with no synopsis at the moment, or the third temple, for obvious reasons. I can see this mall being the key to unlocking the entrance into the third temple, or just a required display of teamwork and strength in order to smash the absolute hell out of something. Speaking of runes, it seems the second temple will feature the return of Valeriana, the salamander from Bazaar Bazaar, who had the antique stand of artifacts similar to the Calamity Box. As it turns out, she's a very important character, though I'm sure most of us saw that coming a mile away. What we are witnessing on this pillar seems to be the blue gem being recharged, which means Valeriana knows how to recharge them in the first place. Notice how you can see her tail holding the Calamity Box as she walks to the center of the pillar. The pillar illuminates with blue runes from the center, underneath her staff, which she more than likely used to activate this pillar in the first place. And take a look at some of these runes. I spy the amphibia emblem, a crystal next to it, a giant gem, likely for the blue gem, and loads of stars. Notably, three big ones on three of the five rows. I believe, aside from character development, a big part of this journey to the three temples will be setting up the big prophecy at the end of the theme song which in return sets up the third and final season of the series. Anne, Marcy, and the planners are in the first temple, the floor full of blue, red, and green tiles. As the quotable ruins spell out, Danger Room, what to do? 
which we can assume is yet another puzzle for Marcy to solve her way. Something that could, once again, make Anne feel very insecure. Something that was first highlighted in the episode Scavenger Hunt. In hindsight, that episode definitely set up this upcoming half hour special. You know, having to solve puzzles, one of the girls having to outshine the other. I assume we'll see a substantial number of parallels to that episode along the way. The hands of Valeriana lays a scroll out on the table that illustrates an open calamity box, the three gems glimmering above, three hooded figures observing said gems, and some runes sprinkled in on the side. Since a little later we see the gang gathered around her table, listening in on Valerina's rundown of the scroll, I think I have a pretty good idea of where everything's going to go. Either before or after the adventure to the first temple, the group would be pointed in the direction of the bazaar once more to find Valeriana, being reminded of her artifacts similar to the calamity box that was gathered on her many adventures. From there, Valeriana will likely become an exposition machine, as she reveals a little bit of her past and what she knows about the calamity box, and likely how she'll meet them at each temple in order to recharge each gem. Elements and characters from season 1 are really starting to come together, and I couldn't be more delighted. But what got me really excited was this next shot, which has to be either from the dinner, Battle of the Bands, or the season finale, True Colors. Which is my best bet. Within Utopia Castle, a bunch of knocked out toads are piled around none other than my amphibian babe, General Yunnan who immediately strikes a pose at whoever is standing in her direction. And with it being this late in the game, it really could be anyone. This could be her reunion with the likes of Grime and Sasha, or this could be the moment she becomes acquainted with Anne and the Planters, which could lead to some interesting family revelations, considering what was already alluded to with Sprig and Marcy at the gates. I've never seen a frog your color before. You're not poisonous, are you? Yeah, I literally actually don't know. Furthermore, this confirms that we will see Grime and Sasha's attempted coup on Utopia Castle this season. While the presence of the Toads has me weary in my theory of Grime and Sasha pulling up with a robot army, I still don't want to rule it out yet. I definitely can see Toad to Redemption giving us a clearer idea on the direction of how this plot thread is going to pan out. The Toads abandoned Grime, save for Percy and Braddock, so either he'll gain back their allegiance in Toad to Redemption, or he'll just gain SOME of his army back, but still turns to the surviving robot factories for the bulk of his muscle. Nevertheless, I can barely contain the hype. To know they are going to make it to the confines of Utopia Castle, and that the badass new awaits them, just fills me with such anticipation and adrenaline. In another very telling and very alluring snippet, Marcy is seen sprinting through a familiar environment, dodging laser blasts from King Andreas's chess pieces, which, if you may remember, appeared at the end of Marcy at the Gates. Even the floor itself is that of a chessboard. Considering a few seconds later, we see an enraged Marcy holding these chess pieces, granite normal size, it seems like she'll become aware of Andreas's game very soon, and she won't be happy to find out that she's been used this entire time. If I had to guess, Marcy will stumble upon this room that we saw Andreas in before his proper debut, and this will be the moment she begins to piece together his plan. However, the room will be booby-trapped, causing Marcy to get hit with some sort of shrieking spell, and she winds up the size of the deadly chess pieces, leading to the escape portrayed here. Mayor Toadstool is seen conversing with Newtopian guards in Warkwood, when suddenly, a giant mole-like creature emerges to wreak havoc. I'm just gonna take a guess and say that this is from the episode, New Wartwood. Due to the presence of the guards, likely assigned to keep an eye on the Calamity Box, Marcy's attempts to sway Wartwood in her favor results in shenanigans like this. As for why Marcy needs to gain their approval anyways, I'm just gonna assume like Sprig, they all need a little convincing that Anne's friend is trustworthy. After the whole Sasha fiasco, Anne is seen dramatically turning in the rain alongside Sprig and Polly Silhouettes running in a storm. Both of these have to be from the episode After the Rain, the only upcoming March episode with no available synopsis on Disney's social media. But we have it anyways, thanks to the world of online TV guides. And as Hop Hop to retrieve the music box, bringing some long buried secrets to light. Yeah, this episode is going to put the Planter family to the test before the journeys to the temples begin. Anne will likely feel betrayed and underestimated by Hop Hop, bringing a lot of their season 1 tension back to light, while Hop Hop will likely be pressed to spill quite a few secrets. I bet that the grand reveal of this episode, the reason why Hop Hop is so afraid of the box's true potential, is that he knows that this box has a direct correlation to the death of Sprig's mother. 
Another clip shows the family embracing in front of Hop Hop's book, so they're going to reach a resolution, and they have to rationalize Hop Hop's way of thinking, so something like this feels like a guarantee. And to break down the next scenes in order, Anne and Sasha's volcanic encounter has finally come to fruition at the Third Temple. The two are likely competing to recharge the Third Gem, only for it to turn into forced cooperation, as Anne will likely realize no one can truly solve this temple's trials except for Sasha. Due to her affiliation with the Purple Pink Gem, the final test of strength in this temple, pitting the two against a titan made of obsidian and magma, the guardian of the gem. Take note of the eye-shaped insignia on Sasha's cape. This same insignia appears on her shoulder pad in the season 2 opening. This insignia likely represents her and Grimes' rebellion against King Andreas. Anne's also armored up over her school uniform once more, in an outfit similar to her appearance in Reunion which saw her first fight against Sasha. Sasha has an impressive display of strength, as drawing her sword results in forming a gosh dang crater around her, maneuvering around the titan as he brings down his club against her. Now the absence of Marcy and the planters here, whereas they were present in the entrance of the temple, has me thinking that early into the episode, Anne and Sasha get separated from their two groups, having to put their heads together to get out of the situation. But in a classic move, one of them pulls a fast one and makes off with the recharge pink gem. If I had to guess, that's going to be none other than Sasha's doing. We have a flashback of the moment Sasha met Anne and Marcy, as it appears the latter two were being bullied, likely by the school bully we saw at reunion, Maggie, when Sasha triumphantly comes to their aid. Take note of the setting of the scene. The location they met is the same location they chose to head to on Anne's birthday, when they opened the Calamity Box and were all sent to Amphibia. While Anne is eager to introduce the two of them, Marcy seems a little intimidated by Sasha at first, before melting into a more shy expression. I assume this flashback will be from either Total Redemption or True Colors, and give us a deeper understanding of Sasha's transformation from a kind, caring friend to the manipulative and aggressive rival we see today. This flashback fades into Anne and Sasha, atop of a structure in Utopia. Smoke slowly starting to overshadow the clear blue sky, conveying to us that the coup on Utopia is well underway, as Anne has her sword drawn against Sasha, who appears to be surrendering, but going off the updated Season 2 opening, we know that's absolutely not the case. Again, I imagine Sasha will make off with the pink gem in the Third Temple, causing Anne to have her guard up, and now Sasha is trying to defuse the situation between the two. This could either come from a genuine change of heart, like in her final moments before attempting suicide in Reunion, or it's a trick to get Anne to let her guard down and steal the rest of the Calamity Gems and Box for her and Grimes' own gain. But unfortunately, the one she should be keeping her eye on, according to the opening, is of course, Marcy. And after the release date, we have a quick stinger of Frobo showing off his gardening skills, impressing Hot Pop, who welcomes him into the family with open arms. This is absolutely from the episode Friend or Frobo, and given the destruction surrounding them, I'm guessing Frobo and Polly have created quite a mess. But this one simple action has caused instant forgiveness. As for why Hop Hop is welcoming him to the family, we'll touch on that in a theory that's been floating around that I've been putting off covering for months. But now that the show is back in business, I will do my best to give you as much Amphibia goodness as possible. For now, I'll just say, Sprig didn't just cause one of the robot factories to malfunction, he indirectly created a new member of the Planter family, one that may be safe from the horrors of voice acting budgets. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. What aspect of this trailer has you the most excited? Which episode are you looking forward to the most? Let us know your thoughts down below. And you can keep the conversation going over at Roundtable Vids on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find me at Ostrich Fox. Shout out to our amazing patrons for their support. And if you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. See you guys next time.